Point number two that I want to talk about after the grace to be is the grace to do. The grace to do, which is a verb, obviously. Romans chapter 12, verse 9 says, Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. It says, cling to what is good. Romans 12, 9, love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. In order to cling to what is good, you have to remember what it looked like to cling to something that was not good. You have to know what it was like to cling to something that is bad. You have to know what it looks like when, when, when things have not worked out, when you have been you're attached to something that is not growing and something that is not alive. In order to appreciate clinging to something that is good, you have to realize that the reason why I'm clinging to this and it's good, the reason why I can be stable and consistent is because I know what it looks like when I stop clinging to good. Love must be sincere. Just hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. This is why I can withstand the heat. Why? Because I'm clinging to what is already proven to be good. I can't get uh, focused on what you're doing because you're trying to get me out of my place. I have to make sure I stay focused on what God has told me. God has given me the grace to cling what is good. I can't move. I can't God, I'm planning. God, I'm going to trust you. I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know when you're going to do it. I don't know where you're going to do it. I don't know why you're going to do it. But right now, I am going to cling to what is good. In the flood. That's why when it gets hot, that's, that's the reason why I, I don't I don't lose focus during that time. Because of grace. Grace has planted. See, when you find what you have the grace for, you'll be able to hold on until God tells you something different. God is not going to tell you to let go just to not do anything. God is not going to take you out of clinging to what is good until he says, okay, I have something better for you. You have gone through, I told you, it's cyclical. Everything that we go through, we go through these different testings in life. And once you have been proven that you have the stick ability to endure whatever season that you're in, whatever you experience, God says, okay, now you're being elevated. So you're going to elevate, you have to cling a little bit harder because you've been elevated to another level. God said, this is what I need for you. Cling to what is good. You have to have the grace to clean. Because everyone can't do it because there's some people are so fickle with their emotions and with their feelings and what they feel and how they feel. You know, if y'all told me the truth, then yeah, yesterday I was like, man, I don't even know if I feel like coming to church tomorrow. There were some people with me yesterday. I was like, I, I, I really was not feeling well. Even this morning, my wife was like, are you okay? Are you good? I said, I, I have the grace to do this. It doesn't matter how I feel, I have, to, I have the grace to be able to do this. Why? Because I'm planted. Yeah. Yeah. Romans 12, 10 says, be devoted to one another in love. Yeah. Honor one another above yourself. Verse 11 says, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Verse 12 says, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. This is the key. Joyful in hope. Patient in affliction. Can you stand here? And faithful in prayer. You know what the word of God says? The, the, the prayers of the righteous avail is much. So you can't, I can't preach a message like this. You can't hear a message like this. Make such a, a, a bold statement without having the faith to act, you know, the, the ability to activate your faith to believe and receive this. It says I, I be joyful. Joyful is different than happiness. Yeah. Happiness is predicated on somebody externally doing something for me that makes me happy. But when I choose to be joyful, when I cling to being joyful, that means that no matter if someone does it or they don't do it, or what they say, if they for me or if they're against me, that I'm choosing to be joyful. And when you choose to be joyful, you can be patient in affliction. It's not saying it won't come. It's not saying you won't have affliction. It's telling you that you know, it's not really easy to be joyful. Say, I just need you to cling, knowing that you, if you have 
the grace to endure this. Yes. But it's saying you have to be faithful in prayer as well. Yes. Yes. Honest prayer. God, I don't I like this season that I'm in. God, I don't know why I'm having this warfare. God, I don't know why I feel like I take one step forward and take four steps backwards. God, I really don't understand. God, say, I get it. I need you to be joyful. Keep a smile on your face between them before. Be patient. Be patient because there's something that I have for you. I've already established on the inside, but I'm telling you there'll be a point in your life where grace is going to be re revealed. And you're going to say, God, this is the reason why I have to endure. God, say, just be joyful. Impatience. Faithful in prayer. That's the key. Amen. The key. You want to change your life around? You start living your life intensely with these type of things. Yeah. Where you wake up every day choosing to be joyful. Yeah. Yeah. Where you be patient in affliction. Affliction is going to come. You are going to have some trials and tribulations. You will have some tests, but it's saying be patient. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because you have the grace to endure it. Romans 12, verse 13 says, Share with the Lord people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Yeah. Verse 14 says, Bless those who persecute you and bless and do not curse. Right. Oh, man. There you go, Pastor Ray. You started off with talking about pursuing peace with everyone. I was good with clinging to grace. Except, tell you a story. Yesterday, just yesterday, you know, uh, every week um, I, I, I go into the, the juvenile prison, and my, me and my, my dad, we went yesterday, we just went, and um, our, our Bible study was playing basketball, right? So we brought the basketball, and we were just playing basketball with the, with, the, uh, with the juvenile offenders, and it was great because you could see that even though they were in jail for crimes, you could see the innocence in them while they were just being, being, being kids for once. Yeah. Right, so we're going to a basketball game, whatever, and then one of the, uh, the, 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 the guys who I've been ministering with for the last uh, few weeks got really, really upset with me. And so he started talking kind of slick, kind of crazy, to the point where I thought maybe the guard had to intervene. They're looking at me like, are you okay? I'm like, I'm fine, I'm fine. You know, and so he, you know, well, he goes off. And for an instant, just for an instant, I'll let, let me be honest. For an instant, I, I, I wanted to give him a piece of my mind. I wanted to say, brother, you, you know I'm not getting paid to come here, right? You, you know that I am free and I'm not locked up, right? You know that I, I, I can leave today and I don't have to come back. Give him a piece of your mind, but you need peace in your mind. Yeah. So this is a critical situation right here. Where because all he knows is hostility and anger. All he knows is dysfunction. And he, all he knows is me is, is combat and being vengeful in combat. And God's saying, Can I use you right here? Yeah. Yeah. I was like, Holy Spirit, I hate what about this. This dude is calling me everything except for Pastor Ray right now. <laughs> And so I went through that, and so we, we were going back and forth, and I realized, I said, okay, God, I, I see what you're doing right now. But the thing is, you cannot rebuke a hater and be a hater yourself. It's impossible. It's impossible. You cannot rebuke a hater and be a hater yourself. You have to pick and choose which one it is that you're going to do. And so once I realized that, God, okay, I understand what you're trying to do. This is, can only be done by the grace because my, my flesh, my flesh, Raymond Stewart, the second one to tell him a piece of it, get him a piece of my mind. But I realized God just setting something up bigger than myself. The thing is, Lord, I can't, can I trust you to be compliant for what I have called you to do? Because I knew what he was dealing with. I, I knew his story. And I have to realize and when you think about that, that you have the grace to show someone the love of God, say, God, I'm not going to stoop to that level. It's like a tree planted. So I was in that situation, I was like, Lord, Lord, right now, where is my tree? Lord, Lord, Lord get me back to the place where I know that I'm rooted and grounded, Lord. Because just for a moment, I stepped into my flesh. And, and then when you step into your flesh, that's when you move away from where you're planted into, a, into something that, that is not planted because your emotions are fickle. They come and go. But when you step here where you're planted, you realize, okay, God, I know that I have it, God. I'm secure in you. But the thing is, for a second, I stepped out of where I was planted. Yes. The thing is about the grace of God is that he, 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 he you know, showed himself to me and realized, okay, now you have the opportunity to step back to where you're planted. So we went through all that and all that, that whole, whole conversation. I looked at that brother and said, look, man, I understand you're angry. I'm not your enemy, brother. That's it. Amen. 
we, we finished the game, he wouldn't talk to me and all this stuff, and he, oh, you know, God, you know, whatever. But then he came over, he came over, and at the very end, he came over with tears in his eyes. He said, I don't know why I'm so angry. He's like, I, I'm, just, I'm just mad all the time. And so the tears came to my eyes because I realized that that moment right there where I wanted to give him a piece of my mind, I would have lost every opportunity to show him the grace of God. I said, brother, you don't have to be angry. He's like, I just want to go home, and now they tell me I have to stay here another year. I said, brother, you know what? I said, I understand. I said, well, guess what? I will be here next Sunday, and I'll walk through this process with you. And I realized that you don't have to be angry. You don't have to be set on edge all the time. And I realized right there in that moment that, the, that we as believers, that we've talked about being children of God, that the reason why we have to talk about being patient in affliction and be joyful and be solidified and rooted and grounded is for this reason right here. Because God is saying, I want you to go through the fire. Can you stand the heat so that someone else can pull out the fire? What do you have the grace to do? I'm not saying this to glorify myself. Because I was honest with you. I wanted to, I wanted to go off with a little dude. I wanted to say, in my basketball, I'm going home. <laughs> Why? Because we, we feel like it's something about us. And it's not about you. 